Ja, in der Chart. Ja. Mein Name ist Kalle. Und okay. <laughs> your name was, uh, I think, uh, Cinderella? Ja, yeah, uh, mein Name ist Beavis. Ah. <laughs> mein Name ist Butthead. <laughs> We are here in this uh, K17 in the backstage area, together with uh, Kip Winger. Nice to meet you, Kip. Nice to meet you. That was a great sandwich you just made me. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, you will play in a few minutes. So thank you to take your time. Um, let's come a bit to your history. Do you remember uh, how does it begin with you in the music business and to listen to music, rock and metal, as you were a child? Oh, my God. Haven't you read my bio? Nope. It's a spontaneous <laughs> interview. <laughs> Man, I grew up in a band with my two brothers and... Uh, We had another kid in the neighborhood, and we played Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin. I, I got my first paying gig when I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. In 1968. Mm -hmm. And where was it? Denver, Colorado. In a, I don't even elementary school or something. I don't know. In front of parents and other school members? Yeah, kids. Kids in the school. And how was it uh, to be on stage? What was it for a feeling to be the stage for the first time and play songs for the crowd? Scary. Why? Scared shitless. Because, you know, when you're a little kid, you're trying to remember your part and all that, and it's hard to play and sing, and Jesus, I was only this big. Mm. So, yeah, but there, it just kept going from there, and here I am. I'm still eight years old inside. <laughs> <laughs> was it your first experience? You have audience laughter, right? There's a bunch of people over here. Yeah. yeah. Nicholas, try to laugh. <laughs> um, what was your first experience with the metal and rock music? Was it uh, because your parents play the same in a CD player or cassette player, vinyl, stuff like that? Man, my parents were in a jazz band, so all they played was jazz. But we just listened. You know what? My mom used to help us figure out music on uh, on the records. Her favorite song was Black Dog. And so we would just sit and learn the stuff by ear for years and years and years until I started studying music years later. Mm -hmm. So you studied uh, to play instruments, you stay play, to study play, um, yeah, not play, you sing? Um, uh, when I was, uh, I started, I, I was self-taught up until about 15 and then I started studying Baroque guitar, classical guitar, and then took some piano lessons and I don't know, I kind of learned how to read music a little bit and And then studied ballet, and then when I studied ballet, I was really hearing like Stravinsky and, mm. and uh, a lot of classic musicians and thinking that I couldn't believe they wrote that. You know, you got Black Sabbath, and then you have this giant symphony orchestra. Mm. I was thinking, how this, you know. And so I finally figured out which path I wanted to take. But I took, uh, you know, I was always teaching myself, basically. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of an autodidactic person, so just learn a lot of stuff on my own. To play, like to play a 12, 12 uh, yeah, guitar, that's really awesome. Thank you. It's just, it's a standard Alvarez Yari WY-12. Everybody's always wondering what it is, but it's just a stock guitar. It never changed anything. Hmm. I had this, uh, this friend of mine, well, he's, I, I didn't actually know him. It, a friend of mine had this other guy paint this for me, the guy that used to work on my guitars. Mm -hmm. And I've been using this guitar since 1996. Okay. So every acoustic show I've done since 96, I've used this guitar. Great. I'm thinking about retiring, but it, it just plays so well. I just, uh, yeah. I'll just play it till the day I'm dead, and then I'll donate it to... Uh, Whoever wants it. <laughs> okay. What is the meaning behind the picture on this guitar? Uh, there's no meaning. It's just uh, this. This is a picture from the first solo album I did it's in the inner sleeve. So it was just images taken from the record, the first solo record I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Kip, would you create a band right now in the music business? Would you say, hey, let's do another band with a, or maybe you you been could be in a newcomer band and with a things in your mind you have all the years oh are you asking me who I would have in a band if I made a band now if you only if you would create a band yes uh, which members maybe and would you create a band right now in the music business no uh, I wouldn't but I mean I would encourage other people to I think it's I think there's more good music out now than there was when I was getting started really I do yeah everybody's always like oh music is shit now and I'm like You know what shit is that you're old and you can't keep up with the times. I mean, the people people are always like, oh, music's not what it used to be. And I'm like, that's such bullshit because it's really music. 
new music is for young people, and so there's a lot of great bands for for you know that are coming out. Great songwriters. I mean, I live in Nashville, and I hear so many good artists come out of there. Um, Say some names. Which oh. would you prefer? Well, who's that band? Uh, oh, of course, I can't think of the names now. Um, it starts with a P. Is it with a girl singer, a young rock band? Nicholas? You don't mean Hailstorm? No. I want to say Pandora, but that's not it. It's not Pandora. It's, it's uh, um. <laughs> pa Paramore. Paramore. Okay. You know, bands like that. There's a lot of bands like Paramore in Nashville, and they come out. I produced one band named Legion. They broke up, but they were, there was a lot of good stuff, man. And the young songwriters, singer-songwriter types, man, they're, they're, they're writing some kick-ass shit. Because what's, a lot of what's happened is now that the Internet is available to young writers, they go back and they listen to all this old 70s and 60s stuff, and then they're integrating it with all the new stuff, and it's really good. I mean, I... I mean, you know, for the, all the people that are like thinking that music is shit right now, they're just not listening with an open mind, I think. But I mean, if I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a band. But if I did, Andy Timmons would be my guitar player. <laughs> okay, you can choose your old time favorite band with members uh, that can be alive or be dead. Oh, alive or dead? I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, Makes you know I played with uh, all my heroes, so. I'm not so fascinated by it anymore. Andy Timmons. I mean, uh, well, you know, Jordan Rudis and me and Rod Morgenstein have been trying to do a three-piece for a while. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about it for years and years. Even before Jordan was in Dream Theater, we've been trying to like, do this kind of ELP vibe. But we haven't. Our schedules have just not really worked at all. He's, in, he's one of the... He's like... I mean, in my mind, he's the best keyboard alive right now. Okay. He's a keyboard player. He can play any kind of music, the top of the classical stuff, prog, anything. He's an absolute, unbelievable musician. So people like that is who I like to play with so I can learn while I'm playing instead of just, you know, jamming for the fun of it. But I don't know. There's a lot of good people out there. Mm -hmm. And... Um What can the fan expect from the evening ride today? Acoustic show. How would you describe the show if you stand in a crowd and see yourself? I'm going to play a little green sleeves. <laughs> the long version. This is the album version. That's really stupid. I'm sorry. Um, oh, I just do, I, I do um, all the winger hits and a lot of my solo music. It's all very adapted to this guitar. And I've developed it over years, so it's... It's not really an acoustic show. It's more of a rock show played by one guy on a guitar, you know. Because um, this guitar is not actually acoustic. It's, it is acoustic, but it's got no hole. So it, I plug it in. It's got electronics, and it's very loud, and you know. So I think it's, uh, you know, in the states, I have people come over and over to my solo shows because they're kind of a thing. I get some people to sing with me, and you know, we have a lot of fun. It's a, it's like a love fest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then maybe you can give us an example for tonight, right now. Like I'm not plugged in. You won't hear anything. Okay. Can you hear that? Yep. Nothing. You can. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I have a song called Nothing. But it's you know it sounds like shit if it's not plugged in. So you have to come see my show. Then thank you very much for the short time. Awesome. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Okay. See you next time. See you, man.